because I went up there. I said I'm kind of uh, cool. Hello, everybody. Good night. I hope everybody's doing good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good. Good. Uh, my name is Daniel Higuera. This is actually my house, me and Noah and Yusak and Naomi. A few of us live here, anyways. Um, so for those of you who have never been to the good life, we're just uh, really just trying to create a community of people that want to grow, grow together. And so we talk about different topics in life. Just enjoy the show, please. <coughs>
Welcome, Columbus. <laughs> Welcome to the good life. Um, anyway, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, let's have another round of applause for that amazing band. Uh, so yeah, my name is Yoshi Shiozu, and you're probably wondering why am I here and what is it that I'm here to, to basically speak about. Um, so just to give you some background on myself, uh, I am a chemical engineer who basically used to build batteries for spaceships and submarines. Um, so was, I didn't technically work for NASA, but I worked with them a lot, and I worked for a defense contractor. Uh, so basically, uh, the reason I'm here to speak to all of you today is that I maintained a side hustle on the side that I've kind of cultivated since 2013. And as of uh, July of 2018 this year, I actually quit my day job and I've quit the nine to five grind and I've basically been on an extended vacation since. So before we dive into my story though, uh, personal story, um, let's, I wanted to try to get the feel for the room. How many of you are excited for 2019? It's right around the corner, right? Okay. So um, I'm trying to just get a feel for how maybe you guys are feeling. Uh, we all know that it's the most wonderful time of the year, right? But at the same time, there's a darker side, right? Because this is actually a time of year where your life is pretty hectic. Depending on what trade or business you're in, you've got sales that need to be closed. Uh, maybe you've got clients or projects that are usually wrapping around it around this time. There's a lot of impending deadlines. If you're a student, you've got finals. Uh, it's generally a pretty hectic time, right? Because maybe I can help you guys out. I've developed kind of a personal lean time management system that I use to help me prioritize the tasks that I do in my life so that when things are really hectic, when things are really crazy, this is a system that you, anybody can use and can apply in their day-to-day -day life. So um, my story starts in 2013. Uh, it was the summer of 2013 and basically uh, my life was not exactly where I wanted it to be. Uh, I had a degree in chemical engineering, but I was selling shoes at, uh, at Nordstrom in Hawaii. Uh, so it was, a, it was a pretty good experience as far as like sales and things like that. But, you know, I was working in retail and I felt underutilized <coughs> and I felt like I didn't quite have, you know, I wasn't making, I was definitely in, a, in financial straits. You know, I had student loans that I had to pay. So what I did was I wasn't satisfied with my life. And one day when I was selling shoes, I met someone and he basically kind of opened my eyes to this whole world. He basically, he heard my story and he was basically like, well, you know, you couldn't start making money online. I was like, you know, this, you, we all know how that usually goes. <laughs> uh, but actually he had a, he had a pretty good point. He introduced me to the concept of affiliate marketing. You set up a website and you review products. So, this person, uh, he tipped me off like he had a brother who was basically making money off of commissions for espresso machines, the kind that you would sell to cafes. So he had the premier website that everybody would basically go to to you know, learn about an espresso machine and they might install it in their cafe and it would bring in money. And I was like, great, that's definitely better than working in retail. So I kind of, uh, at this time, just to give you some more perspective, I was still very passionate about engineering and I was trying to get into tech. And so during this time, I was always applying and sending things like that. But <coughs> on top of my day job, I would spend my coffee breaks and my lunch breaks. I'd be in Barnes and Nobles across the street, uh, reading books on entrepreneurship and learning how to set up a website and all these life skills. And I basically kind of tried to set up my first uh, website. That didn't pan out. But in doing that, in all the skills that I picked up when I was learning this on top of you know, the job to pay the bills, even though I was busy with life, I was able to basically start making money online through just freelancing. And a lot of people, when they think of freelancing, they think it's not, it just has this connotation that it's like cheap work that you can't actually do anything with. But with the right positioning and the right skills and the way you brand yourself online, you can actually start to generate a business. Uh, so this is basically the process I was going through. So I had been at this retail, you know, it was after college and still trying to get to the mainland. I knew I had to get out of Hawaii if I ever wanted to get a chemical engineering job. So a friend of mine actually, basically he had graduated from Harvard from his master's and he basically, he wanted to st start a business where we would make insulation out of fall leaves. And I'm like, I'm a chemical engineer, I can help you with that. 
Uh, so basically, I buy a one-way ticket to Gloucester, Massachusetts um, to chase this home energy retrofit money that was available at the time. Uh, so this was all during this time. The reason I could afford to do that while paying student loans was because of the side hustle. Now, I wasn't passionate about writing or anything like that. It was a means to an end. Uh, I was doing content for uh, different tech companies that basically want to set themselves up as a voice of authority in their industry. So I would have to, I had to have the technical know-how to learn their industry, learn about whatever their frameworks or technologies that they're working with, and I'd basically create content. And if you know anything about search engine optimization or digital marketing or internet, content is king. In doing it consistently again and again, blocking off time in my day, I was able to develop a skill and even a passion. And what I started to learn was that passion is not something that you find. Uh, we're always saying, how do you find your passion? But really, it's something that you build. Uh, you put into consistent effort consistently day after day. You block off time for that. It starts to build momentum. And this is basically what I learned. So no matter what I was doing, the startup life was crazy. I was living in my friend. He, he had three little girls, and they're adorable. Um, Frozen had just come out. <laughs> I, I heard the whole movie <laughs> before I actually got to sit down and watch that thing, because they knew all the songs, except for that troll song. Uh, but <laughs> all the other ones they loved. And anyway, just to, it was like a pretty hectic life. Long story short, as most startups do, this one did not pan out. But because I was working as a process engineer at a startup, I was able to use that to get my, my first engineering job. And from there, the doors just opened. So I basically got a job working at the defense contractor where I've been at the last four years. Uh, and I was basically a project engineer slash program manager. Um, it was a you know, full-time job. It's pretty much what every engineer wants to get. It wasn't quite in my major, but it was really cool. We were designing batteries for spaceships and submarines. While doing that, you know, I had the option. I'm now in a new tax bracket. I had to make a decision. Can I keep doing this at the rates that I was doing? Uh, can I keep going? And what I decided at that time was, you know, it's just money that I can't afford to leave on the table, so I kept doing it. I kept, it was basically a habit at this point, you see. You do something consistently enough, and you block enough time, and you, you, you always deliver, uh, you build a habit. No matter what my life circumstances were, I was able to continue to work on my side hustle. It was just a thing that I was consistent with. Fast forward to the present, and well, I was finally able to quit the nine to five grind. I've just been traveling. Uh, now, you're probably wondering, all right, what you want to know is how do you actually do that and block your time? And that's what I'm going to get into into the next section. But first, I'm going to go into the discussion questions. The first discussion question I wanted you to, guys to answer, what we'll talk about is, what's the one thing in life that you've been putting off that you really want to be doing and why? We've all got things that we want to do, that we feel like we should be doing, but just because of this maintaining the status quo of life, uh, there's just all these actions that you have to take you know, just to maintain your life. You've got to pay your bills, you, know, you have to eat, you have to do your groceries, you've got family obligations, relationships. But you see what I'm saying, right? Uh, <coughs> basically, this is the main point of my talk. Um, I, you've heard my story, and I know I was kind of a, I'm not really a public speaker. One of my action items, pro action items, that I would want to do is actually attend Toastmasters. It's been on my to-do list for a while. I have no real S -S excuse not to do it, um, but, you know, life. <laughs> so um, I'm going to basically break down a system that you can use that I used when I was able to hold a full-time job attempt a startup all while maintaining a side hustle at the same time. My life was crazy because my, my full-time job was no joke. It was, you know, I was working with NASA. I had to know what I was doing. Um, it was a project management role. There was a lot of work involved. And so my system, I basically dubbed it pro-action items. And action items, if you don't know, uh, when you're in a defense, working for a defense contractor, we usually have these major critical design reviews at the start of a project. And you bring like 20 people from different organizations into one room, and we basically hash out the requirements and what needs to be done for a project. Um, and basically, you will generate action items at the end of this process, uh, things that we know that the different parties are privy to that we have to accomplish. So I was like, why don't I manage my life 
in a similar manner. So I came up with a system called ProAction Items based on the idea that I realized there are things you do in life that are status quo actions, and there are things you do in life that are proactive actions. The reason I was able to stay on my time is I actually started tracking it. It's really simple. You have four columns. The first column is your pro-action items. So these are, you basically, you have the four columns and each row you only put in a number. That's it. All you're doing is tracking your time. Make sure that you're utilizing the same 24 hours in a day that everybody gets. So like what's the difference between you and Bill Gates or uh, Elon Musk or any number of those people. You all have the same 24 hours in a day. I mean there's lots of differences but I'm talking about within the scope of the time we're all given here on this earth. Uh, we all have to be able to manage that time and how you manage that time is how you can get to these items that you want to get done. In the pro-action items, things that you do that are proactive, like for me anyway, it was working on the side hustle because I knew that in order for me to eventually leave the 9 to 5 grind, I had to grow that business. Uh, so things like lead generation, uh, completing projects and all these things, these were proactive actions. Uh, status quo action items were my day job. I, I listed it, I recorded it. So every day for the status quo action column, I would put in roughly the 10 to 15 hours that that takes up counting commuting. And then what I realized was it was really easy to see that, all right, what's left? Well, you have sleep and you have consumption. So consumption is the time I'd spend my, for myself watching Netflix, playing video games. Um, and then the sleep is, of course, sleep. So you can kind of start to see that when you put the numbers in and you've mapped out your whole timeline, uh, you can easily hold yourself accountable to what you're supposed to be doing in life. For the next question, I want you to come up with a life goal or two to dedicate your time <coughs> to. Uh, what might you have to sacrifice to do that? And then it's just a matter of understanding what in your time, you know, what in your 24 hour day pie can you slice away and use to reach those goals. Even when you're doing everything right financially and you're, you know, you're, you're saving money, you're living within your, well within your means, um, there's still this temporal aspect. At least in my case, I was yeah. living within my means, but I wasn't always paying attention to that temporal aspect as far as am I also budgeting my time. Right. And so the switch that allowed me to do so many things in such a short period of time simultaneously, it wasn't that I was a master like at multitasking or anything like that. Quite the opposite. I was doing everything in series in a very deliberate way. The basic key takeaway is that consistency is the key to successfully starting a side hustle. Um, so a lot of people talk about they want to write for a living or they want to have a side hustle and they know they should be doing it. The only way you can do that, um, the only way you can see a result in anything really is if you measurement, measure it. Uh, that's why KPIs are such a big deal in marketing. Um, it's why if you want the six pack abs, you have to not only adopt the diet and the exercise, you actually have to count the cal calories, calories in, calories out. Uh, only when you do it at that level of precise measurement can you hold yourself accountable and do you actually, are you actually able to budget. Um, so you have to treat your time the same way. You have to know first the true value of your time. Um, and that lets you get rid of things like maybe less Reddit browsing or less reading political emails. Uh, <laughs> you basically, when you realize the value of your time and when you have a clear picture of what your goal is and how to do it, the next step is just blocking off time, maybe the morning, those few hours, and taking the steps you need to remove the barriers to using that block of time. The main thing I had to do for my life was to basically free myself uh, from that nine to five grind. Uh, now I'm available, I'm ready, I'm touring the country, I'm looking for tech hubs. Alex has been helping me out, pitching Columbus to me. Uh, I'm basically <laughs> in the market for you know a new, <coughs> new hometown where I can start something, meet some cool people, and maybe build something that can change the world. And that's basically what I wanted to do, and I was able to do it because I blocked off my time. So, final key takeaway is when you take ownership of the 24 hours we all get in a day, that's how you can live the good life. Right.
Thank you guys for making this a pretty full cool house. We look, that's kind of cool, you know. I don't know a lot of people actually here, which is dope. But because <laughs> <laughs> I get to, I love meeting new people and getting to know them. But yeah, I think we're gonna do fire if it's not raining outside. We're making bubble tea. If you guys like bubble tea, Ooh, I yeah. love bubble tea. Mm. It makes me bubbly. <laughs> um, but yeah, big thanks to the band. They always turn out dope stuff. Big thanks to Yoshi for coming from another state to talk about his system. Um, Where do you actually live? Oh, I actually live in Connecticut. Now. Well, that makes now. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not all the way from Hawaii, but yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, and thank you guys for uh, turning out. Uh, if you're new to The Good Life, as I said, we're a group of people committed to growing, mm -hmm. and that's basically our bottom line. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you so much. Uh, until next time, have a good life.